Well, here we go with lesson 26. Uh, this is our first lesson on the law of cosines. I, I just thought this was really funny. Um, looks like he's had a rough night. Don't, don't, don't be like this. So we just spent two lessons on the law of sines, and now we're going to move on to the law of cosines. The square of the length of any side of a triangle equals the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides minus twice the product of the lengths of the other two sides and the cosine of the angle between them. There. Now you know the law of cosines. Well, of course, that's ridiculous. Let's 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 show you an equation. Ah, that's better. There's really only one law of cosine, but there's three sides to every triangle, so I've shown you all three of them. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared, which sounds familiar, doesn't it? Minus 2BC cosine alpha, because alpha is the angle between B and C. And you notice I showed you the next two with B squared and C squared, but there's really only one law of cosines. Beta is the angle between A and C. Gamma is the angle between A and B. So that's the equation. Those are on the formula sheet, although, again, it's one of those tough ones not to memorize. Let's look at when we'll use these. So if you remember with law of sines, uh, we either had side-side angle, which is not one of your congruency statements, or we had angle-angle side, uh, which was a congruency statement. And that set up law of sines. Now we're doing law of cosines, and there's two setups you're going to have. Side-angle side. We give you two sides and inclusive angle. Or side, 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 where we give you all three sides. You use law of cosines to solve the rest of the triangle. Remember, those were congruency statements from your days in geometry. So the nice thing about the law of cosines is there will only be one triangle for each of the setups. There won't be this ambiguous case uh, like we have with law of sines. So let's start with a side angle side problem. Here, solve for triangle ABC. Alpha is 60 degrees. B is 20 and C is 30. And as I've always said, uh, you should draw a triangle out, label the pieces. It makes it much easier to solve, and you'll be much more accurate. So there we go. And this is, again, side angle side. We've got the 20 and the 30, and we've got the 60 degree angle between the two. So we can't do law of sines here, because we don't have a known angle across from a known side. So law of sines is not going to work. We have to do law of cosines. And the only angle we can go after, is, or the side, excuse me, is A. A is across from 60 degrees. So we're going to go A squared is equal to, and I'll show you here in the next slide. All right, A squared is equal to 20 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 20 times 30, and the cosine of the angle between the two careful. Don't forget that negative 2. Uh, students quite often miss that. I would do this from right to left. You can fill in the pieces if you want to, but no students will do this all in their calculator. If you're going to do it in your calculator, I would work from right to left. I would do the cosine of 60, and then I would go all the way from right to left, making sure you get that negative 2 in there. And if you do that, you come up with A being you know, about 26.5. Now, we have to use that in our next calculation, so don't clear your calculator, or at least put it in memory or write it down to four decimal places and bring it all back. Don't use 26.5 in the next calculation. All right, so let's get that in and let's see what we can do next. So now that we have a known side across from a known angle, we can use the law of sines to solve for either beta or gamma. Careful though, we have to use inverse sine to solve for beta or gamma. And when you hit inverse sine, your calculator always returns an acute angle. What if the angle is obtuse? Remember I started out by saying this is a side angle side problem. There can be one and only one triangle. There's no ambiguous case here. So I'm looking at this, and gamma is my largest angle. It's the only angle that could be obtuse if there is an obtuse angle. There's no guarantee there's an obtuse angle here. But I know beta can't be obtuse because it's got to be smaller than gamma. Gamma is the only one that can possibly be obtuse because it's the largest angle. Here's your tip of the day. Never use the law of sines to find the largest angle in a triangle. So I'm not going to use the law of sines to find gamma. I'm going to use the law of sines to find beta. So the sine of 60 over 26.4575 equals the sine of beta over 20. I cross multiply. I hit inverse sine. I get 40.9 degrees there, roughly, 88.934. I don't have to worry that this is a 130, yeah, what is that, 130-something, 139-degree angle. I don't have to worry about that because there's no way beta can be obtuse. It can't be the largest angle in the triangle because 20, which is the side opposite of beta, isn't the largest side. I know beta is 20.4. 9, roughly. All right. Now that we have two angles of the triangle, I think the third angle is kind of easy to find. So I add up the two angles, subtract from 180, and gamma comes out to be 79.1. Now, gamma turned out to be acute. So had I used the law of sines to find gamma, I'd have gotten lucky. My calculator would have said 79.1, and I'd have been correct. But again, you didn't know that. 
when you hit inverse sine, you have to know that the angle is acute. You can't be guessing whether it's acute or obtuse. Never use the law of sines to find the largest angle in a triangle. Let's move on. All right, let's do another example. Solve for triangle ABC. Beta is 73 degrees, 50 minutes. And we give you C and A there. So this is another side angle side problem. Beta is the angle that is between sides A and C. So there can be one and only one triangle. So I know it's rather boring, but I always do this. I always draw it out. I don't want to take a chance here. So it looks like we're going to have to go after B first. And I'm going to do B squared is equal to, and then I'm going to use the law of cosines here. So let's set this up and solve for B. So B squared is equal to 14 squared plus 87 squared minus 2 times 14 times 87. Cosine of the angle between them. Uh, I take the cosine. So you, you have to do 50 divided by 60 and convert that to a decimal. Add the 73. Hit the cosine. So the cosine of 73 degrees 50 minutes is 0.2784. Work it all out and you end up with 84 point something for our value for B. Now we have an angle a known angle across from a known side. So I can use law of sines next. But remember, never use the law of sines to find the largest angle in a triangle. So I look at the triangle and I notice that 87 is the largest side, therefore alpha is the largest angle, therefore I will not use the law of sines to find alpha. Let's go after gamma. So the sine of 73 degrees 50 minutes over 84.1828, which I left in my calculator, equals the sine of gamma over 14. Work it out, you get inverse sine, gamma comes out to be 9.19 degrees, which is roughly 9 degrees 10 minutes if they want us to round off to the nearest minute. If the problem doesn't ask that, then you can put 9.2 down for your angle. But I knew gamma was up too, or was, it was acute, excuse me, because it wasn't the largest angle in the triangle. And so now I've got two angles in the triangle. Pretty easy to find the third angle. So add the two angles up, subtract from 180 and I come out with 97 degrees. Well, 96.9756. So when I work that to the nearest uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to end up with 97 degrees roughly uh, for my alpha. So it turned out it was obtuse. Had I used the law of sines to find alpha, I would have ended up with um, an acute angle and I would have been wrong. And you know what? I probably wouldn't have realized it because it still would have been the largest angle in the triangle and C still would have been the smallest angle. You can't use the law of sines to find the largest angle in a triangle. Find one of the two smaller ones and then use addition subtraction to find that third angle. Here's a case where we'd have been wrong had we used the law of sines to find that large angle. We did it. Well, let's do a side, side, side problem. So A, B, and C are given, so these are three sides. Uh, the only problem students have on this one is knowing how to get started. And once you get started, it's, it's pretty obvious how to do it. Now, with the law of cosines, it doesn't make a difference which angle you start with. When we hit inverse cosine, if it's an obtuse angle, we'll be doing the inverse cosine of a negative. If it's an acute angle, we'll be doing the inverse cosine of a positive value. So I don't care which one you go after. Which one did I go after here? I went after beta. So I said 3 squared is equal to, and then I did that. Now, students have troubles getting started on this. If, it's a, if they're across from each other in the triangle, as 3.0 and beta are across from each other, then they'll be across from each other in the equation. And look, beta and 3.0 are across from each other. So 3 squared is equal to 4 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 4 times 6 cosine beta. You work it all out. Warning. See where it says 52 minus 48? You can't take 52 minus 48. you got to subtract the 52, divide by the negative 48, and work it all out. You do inverse cosine. And beta comes out to be 26.4, eh, roughly, 26.3843. But hey, what do we have now? We have a known angle across from a known side. I can now use law of sines, but we don't go after the largest angle with the law of sines. So it's pretty obvious that alpha is my largest angle because it's across from 6, so I'm going to go after gamma. So the sine of 26.4 degrees, roughly, over 3 is equal to sine of gamma over 4. And I do the inverse sine of 0.5925, and I come up with 36.3 degrees. And I know it's acute because it's not the largest angle in the triangle. So now we'll do addition, subtraction to find our third angle. So we add up beta and gamma, and we subtract it from 180. And look at there. Alpha was 117.3 degrees, roughly. It was obtuse. Had we used law of sines? Here I think you'd have figured it out though because you would alpha would have ended up not being your largest angle 
uh, you, you would have had gamma being way too big. You probably would have seen this one. Uh, it wasn't a true statement. Never use the law of sines to find the largest angle in a triangle. You will be disappointed half the time. Hey, we did that one. Let's move on. Well, you knew you had to do an application problem sooner or later. Here we go. Distance between two ships. Uh, the nice thing about the ship problems here is we won't be asking you for the direction or the bearing back. We'll do airplane problems also, but again, we're only going to use the law of cosines to find the distance between the two ships. So these aren't too tough. So a ship leaves port at 2 and travels north 40 east at a rate of 30 miles an hour. An hour later, another ship leaves the same port and travels north 75 west at a rate of 20. How far apart are the ships at 4.30 p.m.? And this will, these will not be right triangles as they were in Chapter 6. These will be oblique triangles, so we'll need the law of cosines. Let's draw it out first, and that's always my first step, is draw it out. And so the first ship goes north 40 degrees to the east, and the second ship goes uh, north 75 degrees to the west. Distance is rate times time, so two and a half hours for the first ship from 2 o'clock to 4.30, times 30 miles per hour is 75 miles. Um, from 3 to 4.30 is an hour and a half, times 20 is 30 miles an hour. Now notice I did myself a little bit of a favor here, although we're not getting the direction back. I made the 75 um, mile leg about double the 30 mile leg. I, I kind of like to write them roughly um, yeah, proportional to their mileage. You don't have to do that. But notice this is not a right triangle. 75 plus 40, that's going to be our next step. And so what the first thing you'll always do on these is you'll add those two angles up in this case. Or you might you might have to do some subtraction, but in this case we're going to add. And we end up with 115 degrees between the two um, legs of these journeys. So we have 30 miles, we have 115 degrees, we have 75 miles. This is side angle side. So we're going to use law of cosines, and you're going to write x squared, and here we go. So x squared equals 75 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 75 times 30 cosine of 115 degrees. I would get your calculator out and I would work from right to left. And I mean, I've got the pieces all there for you, but you could really, you just put 115 in your calculator, hit cosine, times it by 30, times it by 75, times it by negative 2, add 30 squared, add 75 squared. And you work all that out and you end up with 91.8 miles. And there you go. Now that we have law of cosines under our belt, along with law of sines from the previous two lessons, there's not a triangle out there we can't solve. As long as they give us three pieces of data and one of the pieces has to be a side, we can do any triangle that's out there. Well, this wraps up Lesson 26. Get to work on the homework.